Hello Himo friends and welcome to this new video. So today I am going to react to this beautiful sparring video made by Sensei Seki and Shogo which is extremely interesting first because it is a Kenjutsu sparring video so we don't see a lot of them around, generally speaking, on the internet but also because it's a sparring made with traditional uh, sparring methods and traditional training tools so it is extremely interesting to me. Let's instantly start, you will see what I am talking about in a second. <laughs> now it starts in a beautiful way because like this action is extremely criticized in our environment in the human environment but it's perfectly martial one time a, a person ended up hitting my knee and my protection failed unlucky that day and I wasn't able to keep standing uh, I, I, I can tell you so blunt weapon uh, same action got uh, a hit on the knee it was terrible and uh, think about a sharp sword i mean like and and you see kenjutsu master really interested in keeping like a real fighting methods uh, alive landing the same action so perfectly martial in my opinion at least next what is the purpose of training free sparring with kuroshinai makes sense Another criticized After action in the HIM environment. Like, this false edge strike, like, by our perspective, is a false edge strike. But um, with a katana, you basically rotate the weapon in the hands and you strike uh, at the wrist, uh, hands, whatever. So, relatively criticized in our HIM environment because, like, it's a tippy tappy action or whatever, landed by Kenjutsu practitioners, like, Again, perfectly martial. Uh, I like it. After watching me spar with Tsukasa-san, Sixensei gave me some strict but important advice. <laughs> At the beginning, like I suspect Shogo started mm, since not quite a lot of time training. At the beginning, like sparring is terrible because nothing works as you want, generally speaking. For everyone, it's the same. And welcome to Latsas Six and Say. I love to be the host Shogo from Latsas Shogo, and this is Six and Say. I made a video about the Fukuro Shinai. I'm going to talk about it later. We receive so many comments if we ever do any free sparring at our dojo. The answer is yes. Cool. With these special Shinai. So today, Six and Say, the 22nd headmaster of Kobudo Asayama Shinryu with four years history, his best student, Tsukara-san, and I will spar with each other to show you how we train with Kuroshinai. Most Iai Kenjutsu Ryuha styles hardly train free sparring, and it's also very different from Kendo. It is rare to see a video that shows free sparring practice with tools and methods unique to Japan. So please, watch this video till the end. Really by the way, tickets for a three-day training camp in Japan held by Six Sensei and Lasas Shogo are now on sale. Check out our Patreon page for more information. So then, let's get started. First of all, let's learn more about what Hukuro Shinai are. Hukuro means bag, and Shinai means bamboo sword. So, in the video I was talking about, which I made about the Fukuro Shinai, I talk about the legend slash history about it and uh, how basically the existence of this training tool ended up making the Yagyu Shinkagaryu uh, extremely famous uh, in their times. So I will put the link here somewhere. You are going, if you want, check it out. It's quite interesting, a, a very interesting, interesting story were invented to be able to free spar without getting any deadly injuries. From my personal experience, getting hit by these is slightly more painful than getting hit by a plastic baseball bat. <laughs> so it definitely hurts, but on the contrary, it means that it only hurts, as Six and Say says. Makes However, sense. hurting your fingers may end your path as a swordsman, so we always wear gloves for safety. Most Fukuroshinai don't have tsuba, but we have these special plastic tsuba so we can test the has techniques, which require one. Next, Ooh. what is the purpose of training free sparring with Fukuroshinai? 
、それが目的です打た,打たれてそのまま縮こまっちゃうようでは困ると稽古で培っ Now it's a really interesting way of putting、uh, it because like that's,、um, that's true I mean like when you are sparring、um, especially for the first times but、um, it never changes to a degree you are scared about acting because you, th- you feel that if you start doing something like attacking or whatever、um, the opponent will hit you you are basically scared so training courage It makes quite a lot of sense. ったものがどういう形でかふとした瞬間に出るかどうかだからタコ殴りにして相手やっていいっていうもんでもないしでこれも圧倒的に慣れですから。The main purpose of free sparring with Fukuroshinai is to build courage and develop grit. It is impossible to fight in a state of mind that allows fear to dominate you when the time comes.、True. It is a training method in which fellow dojo members help each other and test their techniques in a tense atmosphere. There are a few other points we want you to understand about free sparring with Fukuroshinai, but I'll explain them while you watch us compete. The first match will be Sixensei versus Tsukawa-san. This- Good master leading by example. This will be a good example of how an experienced trainee in our dojo spar. Whoa. Now, what I find really interesting is that. They keep going in certain situations. I mean, generally speaking, they, they generally keep going after being hit, or like,、uh, like Sensei Seki was threatening his student to the, to the head or neck, and they kept going after like dividing by a few centimeters. Like, it's really interesting、um, to me. It's, it's not the way in which we generally spar. We, we stop after being di- hit the first time. Instead, they keep going. So,、um, quite different, really interesting to me. Even if you're good at fighting with Fukuroshinai, it doesn't prove that you're good at fighting with Katana. This is because of three main reasons. It's not curved, that s c u t is round, and it's a lot lighter. So it makes a lot of sense, especially the last two points. I mean,、uh, being curved,、uh, of course, changes something.、Uh, but also having the, the, let's say, the blade, which is round,、uh, makes it harder to understand. When you are like cutting with the cutting edge、uh, to an extent, especially doing specific actions as the、uh, strike at the hands we have seen at the beginning of the video, you don't know if you rotate at the hands enough if you don't have an edge. But especially what changes everything, I suspect, is the fact that the Fukushima is lighter, so it changes everything. You wouldn't think of swinging around a real katana like you would with the Fukushima. One small mistake, and you could be losing a part of your body. I really like how many one e n d e d actions are present in this party. So, changing to one e n d e d grip to two e n d e d grip is in a so like, fluent way, is like, it's beautiful. I'm not able to do it actually. <laughs> Faint high, go low, makes a lot of sense. Ha, counter on tempo. Like, you know, Sensei Seki received some kind of hit in the end,、uh, at the end. It can be considered a double, of course. Sensei Seki strike was better, definitely. But I mean, double happens in, in fighting, even like extremely, extremely martial oriented fighters do doubles. Everyone does doubles, like、uh, even in real life fighting. So it, it just happens. I mean,、like. Sixensei said that Skelasan has a very gentle personality and doesn't prefer to spar aggressively, but rather tries to actually use real techniques of our d u h a style, which is exactly the point of this training match. Makes sense. The next match will be Skelasan versus Mei. 
Honestly, I hardly have any experience with competitive martial arts, and although I've been training Yaigen Jutsu for 9 years, I look very pathetic in the following clips. But I promise everyone watching this video I will keep improving so we can look at this video and see how much I progress in the future. I also want- Like, you have seen how, like, uh, Shogo was moving in a very precise way during the kata, etc. Like, the problem of sparring to, uh, re is relating uh the actions with what is happening during the sparring so what uh, with what the opponent is doing uh with the environment with the distance uh, there are so many uh, variables which start getting added to the technique itself w uh, and and your brain has to work um twice or even far more than this and uh, so you start getting like stressed, you, you you get stuck, you do errors, you make errors because you have to relate that action that yeah, you know perfectly, uh, it's fine, you can do it but with all of what is happening around you, that's that's the problem. I want our online lesson members and anyone who will be joining in the future to know that it's okay not to be perfect from the beginning. Kuroshinai's sparring and kendo are completely different. Although the weapons may seem similar, kendo has strict rules on where and how you can attack the opponent. True. However, for this free spar training, there's no winning or losing, and no restrictions on how and where you attack the opponent. Of course, you shouldn't hit the crotch or stab the eyes. But for example, you can attack the legs, which wouldn't be considered a point in kendo. Like, of course, like, stabbing toward the head, I I mean, it's, a, it's an important well stabbing toward the, the throat actually it's a very important part of mm, generally speaking weapon based martial arts sword martial arts especially stabbing at the head or the the neck um generally speaking most martial uh treaties fighting methods etc tell you to strike toward the the neck, generally speaking, toward the head, to a certain extent, um, you have to limit yourself in this sense because, like, it's a problem. I mean, I know that the Fukuro Shinai have some uh, little padding on top of it, but it's not enough. You can like still hurt the eye of someone. That's the only real limit that this training tool and this training methods uh, have. But at the same time. It lets you do many, many, many actions. So you have to limit yourself to a degree, which changes some tactics and the relationship of certain techniques with the opponent. But at the same time, it's uh, quite realistic. So it's a very good approximation, considering it was a sparring method used in the 16th to 17th century. So. <laughs> oh. Like I don't know what happened, but it, it's funny and cool. <laughs> After watching me spar with Skara-san, Sixensei gave me some strict but important advice. Like the behavior which uh, like Seki Sensei is mimicking right now is something that you see in many people which spar for the very first time and this is because like a youth this is because like um, people generally speaking as we, we said before they tend to be a little scared so the reaction is to keep the tool which is uh, keeping you safe let's say uh, in front of you uh, 
relatively extended and uh, you get tense so that's how you look like generally speaking this happened to many people who spar for the first time in their life and uh, so yeah it's funny because like it's uh, everything is similar everywhere in this sense this they taught me that in old teaching sets, learn your weak when you can attack at your chance. If you're not always in wow. full control of yourself, True. you won't always be ready to attack when the time comes. Like that sentence is beautiful because like attacking is the hardest part. People think that defending is hard. That's true, actually. It's uh, it's true. But attacking at the proper time, that that's like a true mastery, actually. True. True. As Sixth Sensei says, wearing or not wearing protective gear to spar is very different. Even experienced kendo practitioners become scared and unable to move as usual in this training method. The final match will be Six Sensei versus me. I tried my best to focus on the points Six Sensei taught me earlier. So you see the difference between like um, Sensei Seki uh, Kamae, like a guard position, and the Shogo one uh, from here basically. like. You see Sansaseki that has like a more relaxed arms, which means that when he wants to attack, only has he only has to tense his arms to make any kind of attack. While instead Shogo has uh, his arms more extended forward, which uh, uh, looks and feels to me by experience that his arms are more tense. So every time Shogo wants to attack, he has to relax his arms and then tense, which asks for more time and also makes his attacks easier to see. See how fast the attacks of Sensei Seki are compared to Shogo 1. Finally, I want to answer the question, why not wear protective gear and use a steel katana? First, as we discussed earlier, we don't wear protective gear to train our guts. If you put on protective gear, it wouldn't hurt at all, and you won't be able to experience the kind of tension of a real battle. Next, we don't do it with steel katana because it is a historical and cultural taboo. Samurai in the Edo period always had a katana on their waist to show their readiness to fight for Bushido with their lives. When they really used their katana, it was time to lay down their own lives, and on the contrary, those who would easily resort to violence were despised. In other words, when two samurai drew their real katana against each other, it was when one of them would die for justice for the other. However, this is just my opinion. So if you have any other opinions, please let me know in the comments. Like this is interesting because uh, the cultural aspects, of course, I will not discuss, and I find it quite interesting. The uh, like about protections, it's uh, not completely correct because I can uh, say by experience uh, that um, like fighting with steel weapons and protections hurts quite a lot i mean like i teach regularly i practice regularly and uh, i fight inspiring um, three four five times per week and uh, this means that my uh, body is always covered in bruises sometimes especially in the legs quite huge bruises <laughs> it depends from the level of protection that you uh, have but uh, many attacks hearts because our protections are not enough to stop all uh, the damage that the steel weapon can do even if the steel weapon is able to flex and whatever like even thrusting at the chest um, I have a plastic cover underneath my my jacket but uh, if uh, uh, the weapon doesn't hit the plastic part 
and uh, hits just the jacket like the thrust is kind of mm, like it hurts let's say and uh, this is especially true instead for like cuts over the forearms again the legs etc etc and even being hit on the head is far from being like mm, pleasant because like uh, the mask stops you from being hurt in a uh, way let's say that makes you bleed but you receive the blow anyway and um, like sometimes it's not a problem at all but a few times yeah it hurts <laughs> And of course we also have to consider the classic waffle on the face uh, when you get thrusted and your mask stamps his mesh on your face which is another funny thing not so funny to receive though the maki technique you see also that Shogo has his uh, uh, weapon and arms extended forward so every time he wants to control the opponent weapon is really really hard because uh, he is not able to express a lot of force sideways uh, precisely because his uh, arms are extended forward so think about pushing sideways something it is easier to do it with your hands closer to the body compared to extended and the same way in uh, is in sword fighting Ooh, nice parry by Shogo. Cool. One ended parry is interesting. noticed I learned various stances of this duha but in the last two matches I couldn't put them into practice at all. Sixensei taught me that my arms were way too tense. これね、浅山一伝流 our Nuha teaches us that it is just right to be lazy and not strain ourselves too much. <laughs> However, it takes a lot. I actually sometimes say it because, uh, with my students, which is, is funny because like, uh, I never heard uh, like anything uh, uh, about like uh, Kenjutsu, like um, senseis um, talking in this way. And it is funny because, like, sometimes I say it's fine to be lazy uh, because, I mean, if you are tense uh, all the time, you are basically working every single time, and um, it's not a good idea because you can't move. Instead, you, you have to be, like, aware. You have to move around. So, in these terms, you don't want to be lazy. But in other terms, you should be lazy. So, you should be relaxed and uh, you don't you don't have to tense up. That's it. A lot of experience to be as relaxed as six and say when actually facing an opponent. I would definitely like to challenge this again. 
That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I was in Osaka, I was in Osaka. さらに何もできなかったんですけど、少しやっぱり塚田さんとやらせていただいた先生からアドバイスをいただいて、いつもの近い構えに持っていくっていうことだけは意識するようにしたんですけども、そうそうちょっとだけ変わりましたね、自分の中で。そうあのすぐ思った。塚田さんとやってるときと、はい、人変わったと思った。本当ですか。そうそうそうあ,あ、それは良かったです、うん。少しでも進展があったのであれば。Now that's actually true because if you watch the first sparring and the second one、um, where Shogo was sparring. Like in the first sparring, Shogo was extremely tense, like extremely tense, and、uh, his arms was, were completely forward. He wasn't actually able to land any action, basically, because he was already expressing all his reach and he was just trying to threaten his opponent with the weapon extended. When instead, against、uh, Seki Sensei,、um, his sparring was、uh, far better because he was still. Tense, that's for sure, but at the same time, he was a little bit more closer, let's say, with the arms. So it means that he was a little bit more relaxed and he was able to、uh, express certain actions, certain attacks. But even more important, now he was able to parry certain actions, which before it was basically、uh, also impossible. In fact, we have seen certain actually quite interesting、uh, parries, etc. I like the one handed parry, which、um, I think I will steal, probably. <laughs> And、um, yeah, super interesting stuff.、Um, I suspect like,、uh, Shogo will probably progress kind of fast. And so I, I would like to like,、uh, see him sparring again in the future. I hope, I hope so. Sixty-six、so, so, so. told me that my face looked completely different in the second match I did. I was glad to know that it was improving little by little. So a really interesting sparring video. I actually enjoyed it quite a lot. I actually enjoyed the way in which they are practicing, the way in which they are using、um, that traditional tools to have sparring. It actually looked like something I did back in the days. So when I was practicing with minimal minimal gear only. It was similar but different at the same time because, like, the Fukuro Shinai is a safer, let's say, training tool compared to a blunt、uh, sword, which I was using instead. So, it helps you basically hit properly、uh, on many targets. So, it's, by my perspective, at least a superior training tool in this sense.、Uh, it can be compared. To a certain degree, to what we call buffers,、um, you can find them on the SPES historical fencing、um, website. You can basically have more or less the same degree of、um, freedom in terms of、uh, where you can strike, how you can strike, etc. With the buffer, I suspect that you can hit slightly harder without doing too much damage. While instead, I bet that. The、uh, Fukushinai strikes、uh, <laughs> harder, <laughs> for sure. So、um, it will be interesting to try it out. I don't know if I will be uh, uh, able to get a pair of, the, of them in the future, but if yes, I'm, I, I would love to try them out. That said, thanks for watching, people. I hope you enjoyed this video. And、um, yeah, if you have any comment, just drop them in the comment section. I would be super happy to answer you and to see what you think about this、uh, sparring video too. And、uh, yeah, as always, remember to check my、uh, Patreon page, link in the description if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching and、uh, see you next time.